All right, hello everybody. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I've missed you all. Here is an official video blog. I know it's been like, you know, two and a half, three weeks um, since I've done anything where I've actually explained anything that's going on to anybody. But uh, I am currently heading north. I'm in uh, Daytona, Florida, going to St. Augustine. And uh, yeah, just heading north. Um, St. Augustine is a great place for travelers to uh, kind of get back on their feet and, you know, get some, uh, get some help uh, going for, you know, uh, whatever, like, it is that they do to make money because they do, like, they support street performance and, you know, uh, and, and street music and selling your arts and crafts and stuff on, on the sidewalks up there. So it's a really accepting town of travelers and homeless people in general. Um, so... I am, of course, uh, as, as stated on Facebook, I am going to begin developing uh, a non-profit project uh, that is going to be called Houseless Helping Homeless. And uh, again, uh, houseless because, uh, well, I don't have a house, but I'm not homeless because, well, the whole world is my home. Um, planet Earth is, is, is home. Uh, as as, as uh, stated before on some videos, you know, one race called human, one home called Earth, one country called Earth, one whatever you want to call it, but there's one and one, okay? We're one race, we're human, and we are one place called Earth, and uh, rich, poor, in between, traveling, stuck in the same place, doesn't matter, you know, um, the whole purpose of this life is unity, and, uh, and loving one another, loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. So uh, I am confidently and excitedly uh, getting back out onto the road uh, after uh, almost three weeks of, well, essentially stagnation, um, but not quite. Uh, it was stagnation in the sense that I was, I was not doing what I was trying and wanting to do, but it was because I was really, you know, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit really was keeping me uh, where I was at so that I could really focus on some inner work within myself. And that all kind of came to a boiling point yesterday, uh, and yesterday was a bit of a breakdown. I'm not going to lie, I, I spent hours crying, um, had some friends who've gone through tragedies back home in Colorado um, that I just have been thinking about and praying for for quite a while, and hey, come on, but uh, people waving at me as, I drive, you know, as, as they drive by, it's funny. It's like, don't wave at me, pick me up. Anyway, I'm in, uh, yeah in Daytona on the uh, International Speedway Boulevard trying to get on uh, Highway 95 north to Jacksonville or St. Augustine depending on you know where somebody decides to pick me up from and uh, yeah anyway so alright the last videos that you guys may have seen are probably all from New Orleans maybe one in Alabama but I think the one that I recorded in Alabama my the memory on my phone got filled up and so it's only like a, a 16 second video uh, that I, I uh, got to record and I was talking for a good 10 minutes and when I turned the camera around uh, to turn it off I realized that it was already off so I'm just gonna catch you guys up on what's been going on ever since basically in the last month um, when I left New Orleans, um, which, man, <laughs> hallelujah, New Orleans, wow, dark place, but man, the, the darker it is, the brighter the smallest light shines, and the little faith I had was like a freaking huge bonfire of light in that city. It was amazing what, what, uh, what Father did in my life and through my life, uh, and you guys can watch the videos about that. They are on my uh, on my Traveling Benya YouTube video blog. For those of you who are new to this and maybe coming across this video here is your first one. But uh, to the rest of you who have been following me, um, I love you guys. I am very excited to be uh, telling you about what's been going on. I uh, left, left New Orleans, and when I left New Orleans, I uh, went east instead of west. I was in Florida previously, as you know, down in Tampa, and um, headed west from there and made it as far as New Orleans, hitchhiking, and spent 11 days in New Orleans just watching God do amazing miracles and just really ministering to people and blessing people's lives, um, blessing me, and uh, so, yeah, currently though, I am uh, uh, 
yeah, about about almost a month away from, uh, or at least three weeks away from from where I, you know, from the time I uh, left New Orleans. And in those three weeks, I have uh, spent. What was I in? Uh, I was in Mobile, Alabama, in this place called Mobile, Alabama, where I met a professional criminal uh, who I actually stayed with and who helped me out. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, his name's Roy. He's a cool guy. He's actually a very, very messed up individual, um, obviously, a professional criminal. And when I say professional criminal, I mean he sells drugs for a living and he, uh, when, when, he's, when he's not selling drugs, which he does try to avoid selling drugs, he mostly sells pot, um, you know, uh, in places where it's not legal to sell pot, so that's why I say, you know, sells drugs for a living, but um, he has a pot farm. A uh, small little pot patch, rather, that uh, he goes and harvests every year. And then he does also go out to Colorado and picks some up and then, you know, um, does what he does with that. But he was awesome. Overall, despite all of the absolute just wickedness in his life, um, his heart is, uh, well, his his heart is very broken. And he is very desperate to, to you know, to receive... Uh, receive change and I am the first person that he has stayed in contact with after helping them out he's he's the kind of guy that when another traveler comes through or when there's a a homeless person you know in need he he helps them without question um you know he uh when he's not selling weed he uh essentially goes around the country to abandoned buildings and you know and and strips copper from them uh, and, and goes and sells the copper or whatever other metals he can find there uh, at the, you know, at whatever local, um, what do you call it, uh, yeah, uh, metal recycling, whatever it's called. He goes and, you know, strips copper from buildings and, and does that. And that's been his main source of income uh, for a while. Um, he also, uh, you know, uh, basically got me to, to help him strip copper from this uh, old uh, city hall building. I, th- I guess it was like the city, the, the main city hall uh, that had been moved uh, to a new location. They moved city hall to a new building closer to downtown and had abandoned this building. And um, by the time he got there, all the main plumbing had already been stripped. And so what was left was, you know, bits and pieces here and there that we would you know come across or like stuff way up in the rafters i probably am going to get some kind of asbestos or I, I may catch asbestosis um because uh, i definitely uh was exposed to asbestos while i was in there working with him uh really not thinking about it until afterwards and then i realized oh crap wait a minute this is asbestos this is really not a good environment but slept in this abandoned building for a week uh helped him mine copper and until our uh, until our last day there, I didn't know that it was illegal to strip copper from a building uh, that has been abandoned and uh, essentially is just you know sitting there rotting and being run down. But apparently, it is actually illegal. So for about five days, I participated in uh, in stripping copper from an old abandoned building, and you know that that's you know that, that's life. You, you you do things you have no idea what you're doing you're just doing it because the situation provides the opportunity and and uh, yeah I mean I knew that he was a, a criminal as far as like selling drugs but I, I figured that was his main criminal you know background and lifestyle that uh, he used to make money and I didn't realize that uh, he was just at, you know needing me to help him so that he could get more copper and and move it a lot faster so that we didn't get caught. <laughs> but he's actually been uh, in and out of Mobile, Alabama, helping, you know, stripping down this this place for the last five years, and he's never even had, you know, any run-ins with the police about it. I mean, he'll walk out of there with 100 pounds of copper over his shoulders and just walk a mile down to, uh, to the local metal uh, recycling and, you know, go make 200 bucks because copper's about two bucks a pound. But, uh... Yeah, it's been, uh, that that was a very interesting week. I got to hear, you know, pretty much his life story. He was raised in a very racist household. Um, his dad is, you know, uh, an abusive father to him. He was an abusive man. 
his mother pretty much wasn't there for him at least not mentally she was a drug addict um, so very rough and hard life uh, he'd been to prison once um, long time ago or not prison jail he, he's never been to prison he, uh, he went to jail once long time ago and uh, I got somebody walking up on me right now I'm not sure who it is and it's kind of some dude he's got something in his hand so I'm kind of keeping an eye on that but um, yeah anyway but uh yeah, he, uh, he actually helped me come up with enough money because uh, when I got to Mobile, I'd spent the last of my money just, you know, getting there. So, how's it going? And uh, so when I got to Mobile, I, you know, lived with this, lived with this dude, strip, strip copper for a week, uh, five days essentially. Uh, he put me up in a hotel for a night. Well, you know, we, we split the hotel cost for a night uh, because we had uh, a, good, a good copper mining uh, dump. Um, that uh, that we got about 200 pounds there, made 400 dollars, and uh, split it like 70, 30, or 60, 40, something like that. But essentially, you know, I got 100, 160 bucks out of it um, by the end of uh, that copper dump, um, and then we did one more for like 50 pounds. Uh, so uh, got me enough to get a bus over to Tallahassee, Florida. Um, cause I was actually planning on leaving there. I told him, I was like, Hey man, I'm, I'm going to the rainbow gathering in Tallahassee. More than welcome to come with. Would love it if you did. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to get you away from this criminal environment and show you a place where you can learn how to live more peacefully and more unit, you know, more, uh, in more unity with your fellow man and, and, you know, not have to live a criminal lifestyle, so to speak, just to get by. But I mean, let me introduce you to some people who will teach you how to live and how to do arts and crafts and you know do things to, to make your own way and normally that is what I would have done in Mobile um, I, I would have just you know gone to the the part of town where you can fly signs and how to set up a sign you know uh, offering 